All right, so here's the set of problems. So we start with a pretty easy one here. Um, the coordinates of 240 degrees. So first I have to figure out where is 240 degrees. Uh, 240 would be right before 270. So we're looking here where x is short and y is long. Um, so the coordinates, x is short, so that's going to be a negative 1 half, and y is long, would be negative root 3 over 2. Then we move on to the next problem where we're finding the sine of 5 pi over 3. So first we figure out where is 5 pi over 3. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 3 would be right here. And the sine is the y value. That's going to be a long side. So we're looking at negative root 3 over 2. Okay, so um, we are told that angle A is 42 degrees, side A is 22, and side B is 12. So I'm looking at this as a side-side angle, um, which we're going to use the law of sines for, according to the formula sheet. And then also we have to worry about this one having an ambiguous case, but I'm noticing that A is bigger than B, so there's going to be one triangle. So I can go ahead and just use the law of sines. So we have the sine of 42 degrees over 22 equals the sine of B over 12. And so if I find, let me make sure that's in there. Okay, the sine of 42 degrees times 12 divided by 22, I get that the sine of B is equal to 0.36 and so on. And if I do the inverse, sine of my answer, I get B is 21.4 degrees. So that's 21.4. And then I can take that away from 180 and take away 42 and I get 116 for this side. And then I'm left with finding side C and once again I can use the law of sine. So sine of 42 degrees over 22 equals the sine of 116.6 degrees over C. And then it's just a matter of plugging this in your calculator. And we get, oh, that's not right. Let's try that again. Sine of 116.6 times 22 divided by the sine of 42. So we get that C is 29.4. I need to verify that one side equals the other. First thing I'm going to do, whenever I see bubbles being multiplied, I'm going to take everything in one bubble times everything in the other, or you could use a box. So we have secant squared minus secant tangent plus secant tangent minus tangent squared. Now, in here, these two are going to cancel because one's positive and one's negative. So now I have secant squared minus tangent squared equals 1. And there's a couple ways you can go about showing that this is equal. Um, we're going to use the Pythagorean identity that 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. So one way you could do that is you could replace secant squared with 1 plus tangent squared. You guys seem pretty comfortable with that, actually. And then what happens is the parentheses aren't really needed because there's no numbers in front. What happens is the two tangents cancel out, and so you get 1 equals 1. The other way you could have done that is you could have taken this and rearranged it, minus the tangent over to the other side, so that it said secant squared minus, tan minus tangent squared equals 1 in the identity. Right, so we have a graphing one. Uh, we're going to graph sine. So I start with the amplitude. The amplitude is going to be 2 because that's the number in front of sine. The period, I'm going to take 2 pi divided by b, and b is the number in front of the parentheses. There's nothing there, so it's just 2 pi, which means the width of the quarters is going to be 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. My phase shift is 2 pi over 3, and since it's a minus, I'm going to be moving it to the right. You go the opposite direction, and there is no vertical shift. So now as I graph this, I'm not going to have a vertical shift, but I am going to have a phase shift. And so I just need the right-hand side because I'm going to be starting 
at 2 pi over 3. Now, I'm going to be adding pi over 2 every time because that's my width of my quarters. I always add the width of the quarters. So I'm going to go off to the side. So to figure out what my next number is from, the, from my beginning, I'm starting at 2 pi over 3. I'm going to go off to the side and I'm going to show that math just to help myself out to make sure I keep track of what's going on. I have to add the width of the quarters, so I'm adding pi over 2 every time. That means I need a common denominator. So I multiply by 2 <coughs> top and bottom, I multiply by 3 top and bottom, and so I get 4 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6. So that gets me to 7 pi over 6. And then I'm going to keep on adding pi over 2, which is 3 pi over 6. So I add another one, and I get to 10 pi over 6, another one, and I need 5 of them. So when I get to 10 pi over 6, by the way, that reduces to, what, 5 pi over 3? And then I have to add pi over, or 3 pi over 6 again. So I'm going back to the 10 pi over 6. So I'm looking here, and I'm saying, okay, if I add 3 pi over 6, I am going to get 13 pi over 6, which doesn't reduce. And then if I add another 3 pi over 6, I'm going to get 16 pi over 6, which reduces. Uh, let's see, 2 goes into both of them, 8 pi over 3. So there's um, the critical points. Now the amplitude is 2, so I'm going to go up to 2 and down to negative 2. I'm graphing sine. Sine starts at the origin. Then I go up to the maximum, origin, minimum, origin. Whoops. So this next one I'm doing inverses, and so I'm looking at arc cosine. Now cosine for inverses, when you're specifically talking inverses, is the first and second quadrant. It looks like it's a negative cosine, so I'm definitely looking at the second quadrant. Um, it's arc cosine, so this is saying the cosine of what angle equals negative root 3 over 2. So that makes x long, so it's going to be this one down by the x-axis. And so if I was in radians, I'm going to say that that would be, what, 5 pi over 3. No, that would be way too big. Um, it's going to be a pi over 6, isn't it, because it's close. So it's going to be pi over 6, it's going to be 5 pi over 6. So now on this one, we're doing a solving one. And typically, if you ever do a solving one, you want it to equal 0. So I'm going to move the 2 cotangent over. So I have cotangent x times the cosine squared minus 2 cotangent x equals 0. And now I'm looking at this going, okay, what can I do? This isn't double bubble, but they both have a cotangent that I can take out. So I'm going to factor out a cotangent, which leaves me with a cosine squared minus, and then there's a 2 left there, equals 0. And the reason I want everything equal 0 all the time is because now when I have bubbles, I can set each of those equal to 0 separately. And 0 is the only number you can do that with. So I've got cotangent equals 0, and I've got cosine squared x minus 2 equals 0. Now, on the cotangent equals 0, we can look at it as being 0 over 1. <coughs> so when I do a tangent and I flip it over, it's going to be 1 over 0. So if we think about the unit circle here, um, x tangent is y over x. So we're looking at y being 1 and x being 0. So y being 1 and x being 0, I'm looking up here at um, 90 degrees or pi over 2. Okay, now when I go to the cosine squared, I'm going to add 2. So now I have cosine squared x equals 2. And then I need to square root both sides. So the cosine of x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. And then I have to remember that cosine can never be bigger than 1, and root 2 is definitely bigger than 1. So this one gives us no solutions for that. So the only thing I get on this one is pi over 2. Did you record the last one? I hope so. Okay. So um, on this one, we have um, a word problem, and you're going to have to probably build your own triangle. Um, on this one, I've already built it for us. And the big thing is identify what you have and then also identify what you're looking for. And then once you have that, now you're looking for, you can use sine, cosine, or tangent. On this one, I've got the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So that's sine. So I'm going to write the sine of 72 degrees equals the opposite x over the hypotenuse 100. 
I multiply both sides by 100. And then it's just a matter of using my calculator, making sure it's in degrees first. And I get that x equals 95.1. That's it. Okay, so another um, verify one. I'm looking here and I'm thinking right away I probably have um, an identity, a Pythagorean identity. And I believe, if I remember it right, it's 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. And so if I rewrite that so it looks like secant squared minus 1, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So now I have tangent squared equals secant squared minus 1. So since secant squared minus 1 equals tangent squared, I can replace this with tangent squared. <coughs> and then a lot of times, your whole thing is to turn these things into sine and cosine. So if you look at your identities, tangent is sine over cosine. That means tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. And secant is 1 over cosine squared. So now I can multiply by the reciprocal. And my cosine squareds cancel, so I just get sine squared. So this one we need to solve for x. And at first I think double bubble right away because this is sine squared. But then I have a problem because this is cosine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace sine squared with the identity, you know that one that says that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So I'm going to move the cosine squared over. So then I'm going to replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. And the reason I do that is because now I have all cosines, so I'll be able to double bubble in a second. First things first, though, so i got to multiply through by 2. So I get 2 minus 2 cosine squared. What's going on? Why can't we see you writing anymore? I don't know. It It'll came. Come, yeah. It's. I'm going too fast. Maybe. Minus three equals zero, and then I need to go the two and the three and put those together. So I've got minus two cosine squared plus three cosine x minus one equals zero. And I hate when I have a negative there, so I'm going to change ev all the signs. So it's basically like I'm multiplying by a negative. Okay, and now I can double bubble. So I'm going to have 2 cosine, and then cosine, and then to get a 1, it's 1 and 1. So then I have to look at how am I going to get a negative 3 cosine x, and I'll get that if both of them are 0, or negative. So I've got 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0, and I've got cosine x minus 1 equals 0. And solving these, I'm going to add 1 and divide by 2, I get cosine x equals 1 half. And then over here, I add 1, and I get cosine x equals 1. So now it's just a matter of the unit circle again. Lots of unit circle on this test. Cosine is the x value. x is 1 half, so it's going to be short. Now I can be up here at pi over 3, or it's also positive when I'm down here at 5 pi over 3. And then in the next one, where cosine of x equals 1, that can happen... Um, at, let's see, the x value is 1. That can happen right here at 0. So I need to also include 0 as my answers. I'm redoing it. I'm not redoing it. So here it's recording, and I'm just going to talk it out. I'm going to talk it out real quick. So again, we've talked about this before. We have the sign of 105 degrees in the, in the half angle identity. I need to figure out what angle goes here so that when I divide by 2, I get 105. That's 210, so basically you take 105 and double it. And then, yep, that's the bell. And then I plug in 210 for cosine right here in the, in the formula. You can get that. Now, cosine of 210 is negative 3 over 2 from the unit circle. And then I have to get a common denominator, so I took the 1 and I made it 2 over 2. And then when I add those together, I get 2 plus root 3 all over 2. Now this 2 on the bottom, I made 2 over 1 and multiplied by the reciprocal. And now when I do that, I get a 4 on the bottom, which means now I can square root the bottom. I can square root this separately. So I still on the top have the square root of 2 plus root 3, but on the very bottom I have just a 2. And then decide positive or negative. 105 is in the second quadrant. Sign is positive there, so I'll keep it positive.